If you're a Fuji shooter and you're not using the film simulation modes for your portraits, you're missing out. Most of the current film sim modes are actually based on Fujifilm films from the past and the present. In fact, when you turn your camera on and you'll see it goes to standard color by default, that's really not a standard film that it's mimicking electronically. It was a film that kind of revolutionized commercial and editorial photographers like myself. It was a film called Provia 100F and it came out in like 1994 and they had a couple little reformulations of it. but it was something else. It had very predictable and controllable skin tones, which we needed, but it also had this burst of color that was very, very snappy. In fact, I think I actually gained extra assignments because my portraits had a little more bounce to them than the other guys, and I think it's all due to Provia. Let's take a close look at Provia's skin tones compared to a neutral skin tone as well. Probia's higher color saturation and slightly higher contrast is pretty easy to see, but notice the skin tone color. There's a little more red and a little more magenta, making it much more pleasing. The second film sim mode in your menu is a V, and that's the film that put Fuji on the map. No kidding. That V stands for Velvia, and Velvia is short for Velvet Media, and it was a 50 ISO explosive color film that allowed us photographers to not have to shoot Kodachrome because Kodachrome was needed special processing. It had a bunch of little characteristics that made it very difficult. Now, Velvia is not really known as a portrait film, but it is gorgeous. In fact, it was so popular that camera stores used to ration it to customers and hold it back for their special clients. It was pretty cool. Let's take a look at what Velvia does for portraits compared to our neutral reference image. Of course, it's got super high color saturation as you would expect, but notice how it shifted that skin tone. A little yellow, a little red, it's kind of all over the place, but that's why Velvia is Velvia. The third film sim in your menu is S for soft. That is a terrible name for that because it represents the tone curve from Fuji's Astia film. That's the correct pronunciation, by the way. Astia was a 100 ISO film that was super fine grain, but it was neutral and very stable and very predictable. Meaning, if we had a specific product color or a piece of fabric that we had to duplicate, Astia was the go-to. It was very natural looking and quickly became my number two film next to Provia. I'd love to show you what Astia looks like next to our reference image, but I can't. It is the reference image. Take a look. Just to show you how accurate this mode is, we've made a print on the right from the actual JPEG with zero post-processing, put it right next to the dummy and shot video of it. The next film sim is Classic Chrome, and it doesn't really represent a specific film, but it is very reminiscent of the films that Fuji made before the Provia revolution. They used to make some non-professional and some semi-professional films, I guess, called Fuji Chrome and a couple different varieties. But to be honest with you, most pros didn't touch it because it wasn't that good. But it does have a funk to it that is kind of cool to play with. So let's take a look at what Classic Chrome looks like compared to our reference image. Early chrome films had a very different look than what they do now. You can see here we've got less shadow detail and less highlight detail, and of course the crazy skin tone colors reminiscent of those 1970s chrome films. Once Fuji took over the pro transparency marketplace, they then created a line of color negative films for wedding and portrait and senior professionals. They did a great job on it too. But the next film sim on your list is NH, and NH is for N is for color negative, and H is for high contrast, and that's exactly what you get. This one's really interesting because it's got the lower color saturation of color negative films, but the higher contrast that's only in the shadow areas. So we've got less shadow detail, but lots of highlight detail, just like color negative films. This is kind of a hybrid between color negative and color transparency looks. Now the next film sim is NS, that's negative standard or negative smooth because it represents a milestone in color negative photography. Fuji's NPS came out when the big leader of wedding and portrait photographers was Kodak's Veracolor, their VPS film. 
The Vericolor was 160 ISO, but nobody ever shot it at 160. They shot it at 100 or 125 to give it a little more gusto. Well, when Fuji came out with NPS, it really was a 160 speed film. So it was a little bit faster and it had gorgeous, rich colors, these tone curves that were unbelievable. And for the first, at least in my opinion, my opinion, the first time ever we were able to photograph, well, not so much me, but my wedding friends, a all the detail of a white bride's dress, all beautiful sparkly, right next to a black winter tuxedo. And they had detail in the highlights and details in the shadows. It was remarkable what NPS did. Here we have a very neutral and very pleasing to the eye skin tone. And of course, a gorgeous tone curve. Look at that shadow detail and that perfect highlight detail. This is a beautiful looking image. The next sim mode is NC and that stands for Color Negative Classic. And it's not based on any film in particular, but it does look a lot like a non-professional film that Fuji made called Superior. Superior was never a film that I really used, or to be honest with you, I didn't like it. <laughs> and I don't even like the film sim mode much, so if there was one I would take off, this would probably be it. We've got just about the same amount of shadow detail, but you'll notice the negative has less highlight detail, which is a little unusual. And speaking of unusual, the color distortion in this one is, I guess, a uh, acquired taste. E is another really cool one. That stands for a film that Fuji made for the movie industry called Eterna. And Eterna was a game changer too in the cinematic world. It had a beautiful wide tone curve that allowed cinematographers to shoot both outdoors and indoors and have the same kind of look to it. Now the look and feel of Eterna is, is really kind of fun. If you shoot video with your Fuji camera and you want a kind of a cinematic look, flip it right over to E mode and give it a try. This is a great simulation of what Eterna brings to the table. It's got muted color saturation, a beautiful smooth contrast curve all the way from the shadows to the highlights. I think this is just a lovely cinematic film sim mode. Next we get into the A film sim modes and that A stands for Acros. Acros was the second kind of important black and white film that Fuji came out with. They had one called Neopan that was earlier but it was okay. When Acros came out, Wow, terrific stuff. It placed skin tones in kind of a different part of its tone curve. So skin tones looked different. They looked a little more natural if you can have natural skin tones on black and white. But more importantly, uh, Acros had a really cool grain to it. So some photographers would actually shoot 35 millimeter and leave it a little wide because they wanted to crop in on it to get the grain structure to show up. It was that cool. Here's Acros with that beautiful skin tone rendition that just gorgeous tone curve couldn't be any better. If we put a yellow filter on, you'll see how it lightens the yellow in the tone. And red, of course, will lighten the red areas of the tone. And green, not a lot of green in that skin tone, but that's what it looks like. Be sure to check out that grain in the film sim mode for Acros in your camera. It's there, it's really cool too, and it looks a lot like the film did as well. Now, if you're not into the look of Acros and you're not interested in the grain structure thing, then flip over to the B modes. And just like Acros, it's gonna be B with a different set of color filters. But we'll start off with the basic black and white, which I think is absolutely gorgeous. What a velvety look to it. And of course, if we go to yellow, we're gonna lighten our yellow tones. There's a lot of red in Caucasian skin tone, so you'll see a big deal there. And there's a little bit of improvement with green. And I think personally that if you're gonna shoot black and white video, there is nothing better than what you're looking at right here straight out of the camera. There has been no post-processing to this video footage you're looking at right now. And it was compressed really hard to go on YouTube and it looks pretty darn good, doesn't it? Right on. Now our last film sim mode is another one that I don't use very much and that's sepia. And sepia comes from not so much a Fuji film, but a process we used to do in the darkroom. Back when we would make photographic prints in a wet darkroom, you would have different sets of solution. You'd move the exposed piece of paper through from your enlarger. And once you got towards the end of that process, you could then stain it with a couple different things. There was selenium and sepia, and it would have a brown look. And basically the longer you left it in the soup, the more brown it became. So if you wanna play around with sepia, go right ahead, it's there too. 
I hope you have a blast with your JPEGs and your video files with film sim modes. I certainly do. Be aware if you're a raw shooter that you're not going to get the same look when you shoot a raw with film sim modes and you process in Photoshop and Lightroom and some of the others. The Fuji software will process it correctly, but the only way to really get them processed the right way other than the Fuji software is in the camera. Now there is something kind of cool if you do shoot raw, you can process a JPEG on your in your camera it'll, it'll live right on your card in one sim mode and you can reprocess it in another one so one raw you can have a velvia an astia a provia whatever you want which is really kind of cool i hope you like this video there's plenty more on the way check us out on youtube channel hybrid photo pro thanks bye